All right, everyone, and we are just about ready to kick off with Bummers, not Giants, but Super Mario Treasure World. I forgot to change that, sorry. Uh, we're just about ready to get kicked off with Bummers, uh, seven colors run. So let's get switched over to that layout, and let's get Bummer to introduce himself once again. Uh, also, the Camellia 3 thing, that's a problem with the layout. I'll get that sorted throughout the run, so meme it up while you can, because you won't have very long to do so. Alright, and here we are with Bummer. How is it going, Bummer? I am great. Back again, showing your face around the marathon a lot this year. Yeah. Sweet as. So you're going to show today a, what, very tricky game, Seven Colors. You got anything you want to say before you uh, start the run? Um, no, I think I'll say everything during the run. All right then, sweet ass, sounds good. Right. Uh, I will count you down from three and we can get started. All right. So good luck, man. Uh, you can go in three, two, one, good luck. Okay, so this is Seven Colors. It is a seven sage needle game. And uh, based on the colors of the rainbow. Now, usually I do my runs by doing the hardest areas first and I'm doing the easiest last, just so that uh. If I mess up on the hard ones, I can reset. But for the marathon, I'm going to do the easiest first, and then the hardest last, just so that it, uh, there's something hype at the end. Uh, so the first area this here is Indigo, which would usually be at the end of the run. And it's the easiest one. Uh, I wouldn't say a beginner could do it, but it's not that it's not that difficult. Like. If you've been playing for a little bit, you could probably do it. Uh, there's not really many tricks or anything in here. It's just simple stuff. 16 pixels, regular needle. That squish diagonal I did in the previous save, uh, I actually had to have a low V speed to get through it. Um, I'm not sure if you could do it with a high V speed. If you can, it's going to be way harder. So I just double jump off the platform to keep my speed low. Uh, this uh, this game is considered quite hard. Uh, I think on a difficulty scale, it's like 85 plus out of 100. Uh, and there is still less than 20 people, if I'm correct, there's still less than 20 people who have ever cleared this game. Uh, I may be wrong, but it's de if it's not under 20, then it's definitely under 25. Uh, right here, I'm doing this weird co uh, collision thing with a platform that lets me stand even though I'm I should be falling. Uh, it just makes that easier. It's not the intended way to do that, but it's easy. Uh, here, I'm going to cancel out of the side gate because it's just it's just easier for me. Um, what cancelling does is it allows me to either do a one frame jump or a uh, or less than one frame jump. Uh, that's the way we determine in fan games. The way we determine how high a jump is and how many frames we've held the jump button for. Uh, so usually the lowest you could do is one frame, but if you do a trick called cancelling. Then you can get lower than one frame, which makes uh, a lot of stuff that would be impossible possible. And you'll see a lot of that in this run. Oh yeah, uh, if you couldn't tell, this is water. Not infinite jump, it's water. So that means I do, I could jump as many times as I like, but I fall slow. Got this nice little apple section here. How to go further beyond cancelling? Uh, I mean, there's double and triple cancels, but I doubt you'll ever see one of those in in a uh, fan game marathon ever. And I'm in that case. I'm I'm not gonna explain those either. 
because, frankly, I don't even exactly know what double and triple cancels are. That jumps a little bit weird, you have to get into the diagonal for low V-speed. I cancel that diamond again. Uh, the next easiest is red, so I go over here. Uh, or Kanata could submit Mega Jump Free next year and actually have triple cancels in a marathon. It's one of the few games that require it. But yeah, don't. Uh, the main techniques I have is just uh, cancelling and V-align manipulation. Like here, I'm going to cancel to get a setup for this plane. Makes it easier. Yeah, red stage, again, is the second easiest. This would be the second to last area I do in a run, but not this time. Uh, I like the music here, it's pretty nice. And uh, it also has a mini F in the second screen, which I'll be doing because uh, somebody in chat, J Rocker, wants me to do it. So I'll be doing that for him. Also, uh, this game is probably impossible if you don't have a good keyboard, because it requires a lot of two frames and one frames, and not every keyboard could do that, so if your keyboard's not good enough, it could be literally impossible. There's also a lot of align stuff, which, uh, if there's anything especially important, I'll talk about that. This save uh, right here doesn't really make sense to me, mostly because of the second jump in it. Uh, I sort of just do it and it works. And I don't know why. Oh, I've got to sneeze so me my mic. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Oh, if you think this is hard, just wait. <laughs> this is the second easiest stage. I've got to sneeze again, oh my god. Alright, sorry, it's allergies. I own free cats, and uh, that may be contributing. Yeah, like I said, the second jump sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. And I'm not sure how to make it any more consistent, so I just gotta pray. I've tested out a bunch of things, and, uh, I'm not entirely sure. But, we did it. Oops. Uh, I didn't- I didn't even know that could happen right there. Uh, I just got stuck inside the platform. I should probably cancel this. Never mind, that's not working. <laughs> Whatever. Alright. Here I'm going to do platform cancels. Um, it's basically doing a jump low enough inside of a platform uh, to the point where you don't actually snap onto it. And uh, obviously if I snap onto the platform, then I'm stuck and can't do anything, so I have to reset. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna fall in between this small uh, gap between the spike and the block. Grab the align there, which makes this corner easier. Without that, uh, I'm not entirely sure if this corner is possible, but if it is, with the save align to the left of me, it's definitely a lot, lot harder. Oh yeah, don't worry, uh, uh, there's, the fire department's doing stuff in my apartment building, so that may happen a few times. Just, uh, bear with it. Here I just want to keep the align from the previous save, because it helps with the next save. 
it also helps with this save. Yeah, right there, the spike has moved a few pixels over so I could land on the very edge of the block. Uh, oops, okay, yeah. Here I'm going to use something called AD trick, which basically uh, I press A to move a pixel to the left or D to move a pixel to the right, which is going to change my align. And uh, I need to do that to get the align for this corner, this block corner right here, which actually lets me for... Uh, here you got more platform jumps, simple. Uh, if a platform is under a spike, you can't really snap onto it. It just gives, it makes you jump uh, high as if it was a single jump because double jumps are lower in fan games. And uh, it also gives you your double jump back. So when a platform is under a spike, you can't snap onto it. You can only platform jump. Although in some formations of platform jumps, you can snap on. But that's only if it's low enough to the point where you could do that. Uh, okay, so the align for this mini F is one, two, three. Yeah, I usually don't do this mini F strat, but uh, somebody in chat wants me to. So I'm going to uh, do it for him. Mini F just requires, I believe it's a free frame cancel, which means I go, uh, I do a cancel that's free frames long, which is a very low jump. It's not the lowest type of cancel, the lowest is two frame. Uh, it's the second lowest. I'm probably making, uh... J Rocker is the one who wants you to do this. I'm probably making him very disappointed. I also have to be standing at the edge of the block. Alright, well, J Rocker, I'm sorry. But I'm not going to do that for you. Instead, I'm going to do the 4.5. The actual intended ray is uh, there's a platform in between those two spikes. And you're supposed to platform jump, but that's a bit too tight of a grab for me, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, here I do another D trick, which is just so that I I press D and jump at the same time, so I'm one pixel further in my jump, and that's going to just allow me to be far enough. Now here's the first instance of water. Um, this water works weird. Water in Seven Colors works weird where it gives you your double jump back, but I think that's only if you're moving upwards. Uh, so I'm not going to rely on double jump back from the water. So I'm just going to use both sides of the water on both sides of the spike. Here's a ceiling double diamond, which... Not double diamond, a ceiling diamond, which uh, I think requires V-lines. Either V-lines or V-strings. Uh, I do have to get a line for it. I think, actually, I think it only requires um, V-lines if you have bad line for it. I think that's the only case. So right there, I don't think it required any of that. Uh, the red water is just, um... It, it's regular water. It's just red because of the tile set. Here, I just had a platform jump off a of oops, off a moving platform. Alright, that's red done. Next, the easiest is blue. Even though it's rated 34, I find it much easier than the others. Uh, this, uh, this screen is a screen of L Needle. Um, L Needle is basically just needle that is very cramped. Uh, there's a few games like uh, like it. I'm not very good at them. Luckily, this is one of the easier screens of L Needle, uh, so it's not actually that bad. At least for me. If you're not good at L Needle, it's probably very hard for you. I just need to grab that line, and then I fall 
jump on the right frame, and then land for the corner. Uh, this jump here, the turnaround after I land and jump, have to jump back through the corner, uh, the turnaround is frame perfect, but I also have to press jump and right on the same frame. So technically this jump is double frame perfect. But it usually doesn't take me long. Yeah, there you go. Now here I need to find a setup uh, that lets me cancel and jump through the plane. Yeah, it, there it is. Oops. And then I have this ceiling over here. Uh, which just makes that a lot harder. <laughs> You're quite miffed about the minions. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I grabbed a walk off the line there, so I don't have to do any cancel shenanigans with a s squished ceiling. Yeah, this stage has a lot of cancels. Uh, I've done a few of them. Uh, we're coming- uh, this is the save that most people would get stuck on on this area, because it requires a platform- well, it doesn't require a platform cancel, but platform canceling is the easiest way to do it. Uh, now this is a much harder platform cancel than in red area, mostly because uh, I have to full cancel off the edge and not hit the spike or the ceiling, uh, which takes, which is quite a hard timing. Uh, mostly because it's, it, it, I could either hit the ceiling or the spike if I do it too early. Uh, so I think I have about two frames of doing it, but it's also kind of hard because when you fall off of a ceiling, you're falling faster than normal, so it's kind of hard to visualize when I have to do it. So for me, it's basically muscle memory. This jump uh, is V-line shenanigans. V-lines are basically sub-pixels. Uh, I'm not an expert on them, I just know, um, like... I kind of know how to manipulate via lines, and uh, I also know how to do jumps that require them. Because you just have to mess around and hope you got the right one, because you can't actually see via lines unless the game has a counter. Uh, after that, the rest of this area is free. I need to use AD to get the walk off the line that lets me walk off for a, uh, walk off of a block in a spike formation, and I could just do that really easy. More low cancels. Here you have a downwards Hades plane. There's a few ways to do it. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do something called a shimmy, where I'm going to do a low cancel inside of it, turn around, and then turn back around uh, very quickly. Uh, because I can't act- uh, I'd have to two-frame cancel inside of it if I didn't want to have to turn back around. So, um, that's basically the only way I could do it. Because, for me, two-frame cancels are luck, because my keyboard can't do it. Next, we're on the orange area, and here's where it starts getting a little bit hard. Uh, even though this is- this is supposed to be the second easiest area, but it's, uh, it's actually not. Uh, mostly because of the second screen, although there are some saves on the first screen that are quite tricky. Also, this is a, uh, I don't even know what to call that jump, but I just, it's... It's double frame perfect, I believe. The first jump has to be a six frame, and I think the second has to be a five frame. It might not be double frame perfect, you might have some leeway on the second jump, but the first jump has to be a six frame. Right, just a line for the corner. Oops. You're amazed that people could even seriously play most needle. It takes a lot of practice. I've actually been playing for I've been playing fan games for three years. Um, well, I I've been in the community for a bit more than three years, but I only really started seriously playing uh, three years ago. I originally wanted to get into avoidance, but then, um, 
I somehow just got snuffed into Needle, and now that's been the main genre I play. Uh, because I just find it fun pulling off precise jumps and stuff. It's really satisfying to me. Which is probably why um, I like uh, Jan's run so much, because that was a bit of... Jan and Stan's Kai uh, Mario 64 runs are really nice, because those looked uh, to be, like, quite on the harder side of hacks. And seeing them do that stuff was just uh, impressive. So I liked, I enjoyed watching those. Yeah, this is one of the trickier saves in orange, um, mostly because of the last jump. It's frame perfect, and <laughs> frame perfect drops are annoying. I got it. Uh, I need that. Uh, I need to take data line to the left of me, and I needed to keep it for the last jump so that I could just walk off in two frame. Uh, this use uh, this save uses the ceiling as a kill border to make it harder, which is kind of annoying. I don't really like uh, when games do that. I'd prefer if it's just like straight spikes killing me and not having to worry about the ceiling because you can't actually see it. So you kind of just have to know what frame height will kill you. <laughs> you want to be a boss player as well, Kanata? Yeah. Needle is easier to get good at, but like the peak of Needle is still really hard, so. There's even, there's still stuff that I'm not able to do even after playing for three years, so. But I'm hoping to get there. I have done, I've beaten much harder games than this, but uh. This is definitely the hardest speedrun I've done. Mainly because it it takes a lot of memorization of um, lines, what uh like what to do for AD tricking, and just precision in general. So it is quite hard. Right here, I need to drop and then bonk on the uh, correct frame. To get through the corner. I could stutter it, but that'd, that'd just be, uh, really, that'd be marginally more difficult than if I didn't. Here I grabbed that align and press D, because, uh, the align to the right is actually the bad align for sphincters, so if you don't really know, uh, your aligns and you play this game, you might get to that jump and think, oh, the align's right there, I'll take it. But no, that's actually the battle line, and it makes it much harder. You stutter that corner, Sammy? You see, you're crazy. Oh. Okay, I thought I could get a little. I could. I thought I could get one frame closer to those spikes. Uh, these red bars are infinite jump, so that just makes that easy so I don't have to do a turnaround to land on the save. Uh, and here is where the hard part of Orange starts. This jump right here is kind of hard. It's kind of close to a Hades plane, but not really. It doesn't require any cancels. It's just a precise two frame. Uh, I don't know what's about the Nang achievements, because I actually don't really like Nang, even though most people do. I just felt, uh, I felt that gimmicks would be used a lot better in that game. But to each their own. Alright, nice. That save done. Now we got two more hard saves. This isn't one. Now the blue lines give me triple jumps, so 
they're less impressive than the red ones, but they still make these next saves possible. Now here I need to grab that line off by the save, and then I need to not make sure I don't take any other line, because this is a squished corner, and I need to fall into it with a higher V-speed rather than a low one, because uh, it's actually going to skip the frames where I would be touching it, uh, whereas if I'm doing a low V-speed, I'd fall through it much slower, so um, there, my, my hitbox would get caught, whereas if I'm falling fast, then it skips some pixels, because it only runs at 50 FPS. Uh, here is the other hard save. Um, this is an 11 pixel gap, I believe. It's either 11 or 12 pixels, I'm not sure. It could also be 13. I'm pretty sure it's 11 pixels, because I've only ever done this on one align. And it's basically the align you need. Uh, this last jump is quite hard, because... Uh, I have no idea if that's squished, but whatever it is, uh, this bottom spike being inverted makes the re-jump a lot harder than it looks. Which is annoying. Also, the uh, you have to do it twice, pretty much. One on the bottom and one on the top. This is really annoying. Heckin' Moonsoul's already on the next save. Relay race feels bad, man. Yeah, usually the save takes me a while. Uh... And by a while, I mean like two minutes, which is kind of bad. Ideally, I'd get it faster, but it's hard, so. We just gotta keep going till it works. Oops, I missed the shift key. I mean, I actually think the bottom one is harder, uh, cause you have, uh, it's a lot easier to set up for the top one. Like here, I just, uh, there's a lot less room for me to infinite jump in. And having to dip down into the invert and then re-jump is just quite hard. There are a few different strats for this. Like I could full, I could full jump into that and uh, get it that way. I found that's less consistent for me, but I've seen other people do it that way. After this save, we're home free for for a few more saves, and we get back to hard stuff. I do say this is one of the harder games in the stage. It's the fourth uh, screen I do in regular run. Not fourth screen, fourth stage I do in regular ones. Mainly because of this save alone. But, uh, because the rest of the stage isn't exactly that hard. It's mainly just this save that is a lot harder than anything else. So the balance isn't quite there. If all saves were as hard as this one in the orange area, this would probably be uh, the second hardest area, but they're not. Oh yeah, this is the fourth area I'm doing this run, so yeah, it's... No matter which direction I go, this will be the fourth area I do. Unless I do it in Roy G Biv format, then it's not gonna be the fourth, but that'd just be a meme to do it in Roy G Biv. Heck. If I was a savage, I could cancel this, but I'm not.
It doesn't really matter that this is taking this long, because uh, the rest of Orin's went quite well. Plus, I could, like, lose 10 minutes on one save and still be behind estimate, because uh, I'm much better at this run than when I, I was when I first submitted this. So even if I lose, like, 10 minutes on one save, I could just blaze through everything else. Let's hope that doesn't happen, though, because if that doesn't happen, then I could world record. Uh, I actually have the world record, by the way. It's a one. It's a 120, I think 26. I don't. I don't actually remember. Uh, I got it during practice for the marathon. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely marathon ready. Heck, almost had it. Let me try taking my uh, shirt off because I'm a bit tired. Not tired, I'm hot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> the first clear of loaf. I am. I'm also the first clear of a few things. Uh, that's not really important. Speaking of, um, speaking of world record, uh, I'm actually one of only two people to speedrun in this game, because it's just a hard thing to speedrun. Uh, forgive me if this sounds offensive, but the other person who speedran this kind of did a speed walk. Because their run is like three hours long. Which is not very good. Although I guess I could probably get roasted for spending this time here, but this this save is quite inconsistent because infinite jump is just hard to control. I did practice purple and yellow uh, before I came on here though, so those areas should go really smoothly. Oops, I made it and I went too far left. Just bear with me while this save destroys me. It's This should be the only save in the game that does that. Too high. There you go. Okay, next up is green, which is rated 18, which I just completely don't agree with. Uh, this is downwards playing the stage because a lot. Uh, the mo the jump that's most used in this stage is probably downwards lanes, which is kind of annoying. But oh, I took the wrong align. What am I doing? Yeah, I don't actually think you could do that. Uh, this first jump with the align I took at the start. There is one thing I gotta remember that with AD trick on this stage that I usually forget. There's one save where I need to get the align on the save and then press D in order to actually do it. So I just gotta remember that. Sometimes I forget and press A or even just don't AD at all and then I get stuck for like five minutes wondering why isn't it working. But no, I just had the wrong align. So I'll be sure to remember that this time. 
This, uh, the drop at the end of this stage is kind of annoying. It's like a 16 pixel task drop. Uh, you might have seen a task drop if you were there for the Tudoku run. Uh, but it's basically what that is, except without 16 pixels. Also, yeah, there's a lot of upside down gravity in this stage, which could be annoying. Uh, it was annoying on my first playthrough, and uh, I kind of cheated when I first played this game. I did the thing in Windows where you could flip your monitor, because I didn't want to deal with the gravity, but now uh, that doesn't matter to me anymore. I could deal with the gravity. Legal cheating. I wouldn't blame people who do that either, because... This gravity stuff is kind of atrocious first playthrough. Okay, here, I believe, uh... I think on this save, it's Sammy that gave me the strat. For the second, uh, for the last jump. I just get as close to the gate as possible in 5 frame, and then that makes it easier to get for the diagonal in the drop. I used to just wing it and see what worked, but thanks to that, it's much easier. In world record, I lost like five minutes to this save, even though it's uh, quite easy. Oh yeah, also, um, every area in this game was made by somebody different. Uh, I'm not sure who, green, uh, who made green area. Orange area is made by someone named Saki. The dark, the blue area was made by somebody called Blue, coincidentally. Or actually, I don't even know. Oh, Inferno's been saying it. I, it was Saki might have been yellow. Saki was either orange or yellow. But yeah, from now on, I'll let Inferno say that. Since he probably knows better than me. Yeah, it probably wasn't a coincidence. When Blue signed up for this collab, he's probably like, yeah, give me Blue. This one's kind of an awkward downwards plane because I can't get into optimal position for it before I hit the bottom spike, so it makes it quite a bit harder. Luckily, it gives me the good align for it. to check right there to make sure I still have the ability to cancel. Yeah, this is this is one of the hardest downwards planes in this area. Because of how you... How it's set up. Because ideally, I want to be as close to the spike that's facing right as possible. But I have minimum, dif uh, minimum distance to... Move left through the plane. But I can't actually get into that position. So it's harder. Alright, here I need to take that a line and then I press D. And then I could do it. Now here I need like a medium V speed. I can't be falling too slow or too fast. I just need to it needs to be just the right speed of falling down. Oh, almost had it there. The V speed's for this diagonal. Uh there's, you could make it through the diagonal um, with a different align, 
but you won't hit the gravity flipper. So, this is the only one that works, and this is the only one way to do this save. I don't exactly know how precise it is, I'd prob it, it's probably like double frame perfect, if I had to guess. I'm getting it, I just need to get the plane, which is kind of tricky because you're just coming out of gravity, so it's a little bit disorienting. I'm actually not very good with gravity, I've just practiced these saves a lot, so I'm I'm uh, better than I normally would be. If I were to play a blind game with gravity flippers, it probably would not go well. Oh, you were the second in you were the second person to clear this in. That's neat. I think I was in the first ten people to clear, I have no idea. I was definitely first fifteen. But I might have been I think I was I think I was tenth, actually. If I'm remembering correctly, I was the tenth person to clear. Yeah, Red Bat Nick is here. Nick was the 13th. And like I said, I still think it's less than 20 people who cleared this game. But I could be wrong on that. There we go. Now, on this save, I'm pretty sure it wants you to double jump up onto this, uh, onto the next block. But that, I find it to be harder. Uh... So I just do this, and then I try and two-frame out. Which isn't working right now. There you go. And then it's gonna flip me back upside down again. List of people who defeated seven colors. I actually got into this I actually got into speedrunning this game because um one of my friends Lonk AO um he he like was replaying this game a bunch and just getting like lower and lower death counts and they were like damn Lonk how are you doing that and then um the other person who I said speedrun this game uh but I won't say their name because I'm not sure if they want it to be said um they tried it out too, and then they they eventually like practiced enough to a point where uh, they did a run, and then I was like, "Damn, if Baron could do it, I can." Because at the time we were at uh, similar s at the time that we both did our first runs, me and Baron were at similar skill levels when it came to Needle. So I was like, "Okay, if Baron could do it, so could I." Oh, I. I accidentally said the name Rip. I'm dumb. I don't. I, I don't think they'll be that upset. I don't think they'll be that upset. As long as you don't tell them I uh, I roasted his time. Uh, here is uh even more reason why this area is downwards playing the area. Cause just look at this, look at this beauty. It's a screen that is just six downwards planes with infinite jump. Three of which are upside down. This is what I call top quality design. Definitely not lazy. Definitely not that the maker couldn't think of uh, what to do for a third screen. Nah, this is definitely quality. 
hundred percent. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. I just line up against the wall, try and can uh, low cancel at the lowest point uh, before I die. And then time when I start moving. Which is quite a bit harder upside down. Just because it's harder to see when I'm going to hit the spike. Because I usually look at it based on the kid's feet, but looking at the kid's feet like this is uh, not what I'm used to. Alright, there we go. And now we've got two areas left. We're on to, to the second hardest area. Violet. Uh, which for a long time I thought it was pink, but if you really zoom in, it's actually purple. The blocks are just tiled in a way to where the purple actually appears pink. Which is why I mistook that for so long. But yeah, this is violet on the Roy G. Bibb scale. And, uh... I'd probably say this is another else El Niddle screen. Uh, that's probably debatable, but it, feel it definitely feels that way to me. But... Uh... This area probably requires the most cancels. Also, it's kind of hard to see the tips of spikes, because um, there's a few points where it looks like over here on this jump. It looks like I should make it through, but I don't. And that's just mainly because um, the black tip of the spike on this background is kind of hard to see, so... Where the spike ends is usually one pixel out of where, from where it actually looks like it ends. There is one specific save in the second screen of this area where a lot of people get stuck. Uh, I actually got stuck there a little bit on my first playthrough, and I'll, I'll show, you'll see what it is when I get there. This first save is probably either the hardest or second hardest on the screen, on screen one. Here you go, here is, uh, this, like, Floor double invert that's kind of extended. It requires V lines for me to get the. I, I bonk into the first one and then one frame. I need the uh, the correct V line to be able to one frame, otherwise I'll be too high. Uh, so you saw that the first time I wasn't able to get the one frame, so I had to bonk before it to change my V line, and then it worked. So that was correct. So there's another example of a. Uh, Jump where V lines matter. Uh, this jump is the exact same as the the second jump in uh, orange. There's n literally nothing different. It it like there's more spikes, but that doesn't change anything. Here it's really annoying because. I can't save in a spot to where I could actually just immediately come out and jump, so I need to move one frame to the left each time. Which to me is quite annoying. I also really like the music in this stage. Here I pause buffer to get a shift press held so that I could uh, get a low cancel. So all that really does is let me keep shift held down without actually jumping in-game. And there I'm just gonna save into a spot where I could fall straight through the Swiss diagonal. Now these next two saves I'm just going to 
use uh, D trick to move myself slightly backwards in case I'm not actually making the jump. Like a dare, I'm not making it. So I'm gonna press A to get farther backwards by a pixel, and now I'm making it. Now I can do that. Here I press D two times so I can line up with that spike, and I'm able to do this jump. The second jump of this save is kind of inconsistent, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, in bonus, is any tech bro? And is is there any tech crew here who could uh answer my man's question? Also, here's a Hades ledge. It's it's a ledge that uh is only possible on one align. I also can't land on it if I have a high V-speed, so I need to try and go over this as low as possible. Although I think because of the above spike, I don't think I could actually fall, uh, possibly fall from high enough to the point where this becomes impossible, so I'm pretty sure this is impossible every time. I mean, possible every time, not impossible. Okay, I made it, but I didn't do the jump. That jump's basically a T-bone. Uh, so it's not that bad, it's just easy to choke to. Also, anyone in chat that could tell me what time uh, I'm at right now? Can we expect to see beats ne next FM? No. 50-50? Okay. This definitely has a chance to world record. Here I need to grab this line, which is slightly annoying. I got it. Uh, here I'm going to do a trick called numpadding. Uh, I somehow first tried that. Numpad basically just is a different way to cancel, but it's a bit less consistent, so I don't usually do it. However, um... You don't need to do any, like, fancy stuff, like having a shift held. You could just press shift and numpad at the same time, and it will cancel. Uh, so right there, I already use up all my held shifts, so I couldn't cancel again, but since I don't need a held shift to numpad, I'm able to hit two cancels in a row. I try not to do that as much, because it is not at all, uh, consistent. But, uh, I got it first try, so... This save is just bad. I don't like it at all. So, good thing it went by pretty fast. Also, yet, yeah, the save I first tried with the numpad that I'm talking about is what I consider the hardest save. Here, this is kind of like a 9 jump, except I, uh, I cancel it because it's got some inverted spikes. And it's just more and more cancels. The re-jump on this jump is kind of odd. This is also quite inconsistent, but the first part of it is easy, so it usually goes by fast. There you go. Here's another area where I need a numpad. Because, uh... Again, if I'm not using numpad, I won't let the shift presses held. So the other, only other way to do that would be to chain cancel, but that's a whole other thing that I'm not going to get into. Here, I need a naturally one frame, uh, which I did relatively quickly. Usually, I don't get it that fast, because uh, either I use, usually can't one frame. It's kind of luck dependent, so.
That's basically R that save up right above me right now. Basically RNG, but it went by fast. Uh, world record is a 120. Uh, I think 120 26, and it's by me. Here, I need to cancel it into this small gap up here, and then I need to press right on the correct, not right, left on the correct frame, and then do another cancel. There you go. Uh, I don't know why this save is here. It's literally just a double invert, which these things aren't that hard. Uh, this save is kind of awkward, because I'm going to do three cancels in a row. And then I'm going to uh, jump off the platform. Okay, I did it fast. Here is the save that people um, usually quit on. Uh, because you need to do a downward sphincter that doesn't really have a good s setup. Keep your double jump through it. And then you need a one frame on the correct frame. You also need to press left on the correct frame. So that's like triple frame perfect. And then the jump after is a forced four frame. So it's just kind of uh It's there just so you could choke on it. Right here, this is basically a buff double invert. It's essentially the same, except I'm required to bunny hop. Bunny hopping is a, a way to get one extra pixel on your jump height. So if I get a successful bunny hop, then I'll be I will be one pixel higher than uh than what I normally would be. So like a five frame has a designated height, but a five frame plus a bunny hop will be one pixel higher than a regular five frame. Um, I actually use two keyboards, one for cancelling and one for everything else, because, uh, the cancel keyboard I use is blues, which I'm using right now for this cancel here. Uh, I actually been forgetting to move right for this jump, so that's probably why I'm not making it. Um, and then the other keyboard I use is reds. You could get a keyboard that's both precise and good at cancelling, but uh, I'm not the one to ask because I don't have a keyboard that could be both, so I use two. Oh, I'm not even in, like, at all in the right position for it. Or, no, I am. I'm just being dumb, okay. This area right here is kind of annoying because, uh, well, not area, this save is annoying. Because I can't really tell why I'm dying, so I don't know what mistake to fix. I could not be hitting the bunny hop, I could be cancelling too early. It's just hard to tell if I actually hit the bunny hop or if I didn't. What's also annoying is, uh, it's very hard to move one pick, oh, one frame to the right on or left on this keyboard. So I kind of save into a position where I can move two frames to the right, but sometimes I do actually manage to move one frame to the right. I need the PD player blessing for this save. I am in the right spot. I'm not even sure why I'm not making this, to be honest.
Uh, the gops don't do anything because I can't fit in them. They're only dare to extend the jump. There you go. Okay. This is basically a ceiling double diamond. The spikes are lowered, but it's basically like having a ceiling above me. So there was no special tricks that go into that. Here is kind of a precise cancel. Oops, I got it, and then... Messed up, okay. Here, if I'm remembering correctly, I grabbed out a line, press D once, and then that makes the last jump possible. Now, usually you can't single jump through diamonds like that, but because of the height they're at, I actually can. Also, I'm a god, so it kind of has to let me through. Well, this is a floor double diamond, which are basically RNG, because uh, you need to cancel into them, and then you need a two frame... But, uh, the keyword I use for cancelling isn't good at two frames. So, it's kind of luck whether I hit the two frame at it or not. Next save is the hardest in the stage. Oh, that's not what I do for that. Okay, yeah. I got confused for a second. I'm not supposed to cancel that. I actually two-frame out of there, because I press D once to get the walk off, and then it lets me two-frame and not die to the top spike. I do have to press right at the same time that I two-frame. There you go. Now, this jump is just a really weird stutter. Wow, I did that fast. Usually doesn't happen that fast. And we're basically done with this stage because everything else is free. We've got another double invert, which is actually buffed by two pixels because of the spikes on the sides. So it makes, uh, if I want to low cancel this, it makes the timing a little harder. Or I could bunny hop it. I'm still gonna low cancel because that's the way I'm used to, and I got it. I pray before this run. Yeah, I did. I prayed to PD player. And now we're on the last area, and I think this is Toho music. And this is the hardest area. Also, this jump at this save is commonly called a leaky jump. Ooh, I'm at 102? Okay, if I, like, blaze through this stage, I could roll the record. But it's- it's- it, it, it'll be really tight, whether or not I roll the record. Grab that a line. And here I'm gonna cancel twice in a row, so I get another cancel off that water. I'm hitting the second cancel too early. There you go. Um, I don't do them in rainbow order. I'm going from hardest to easiest, so that's why 
red was, uh, that's why... That's why I'm not doing it in that order. Also, yeah, moving spikes on this screen, which makes the next saves pretty annoying. Because it's all... It, well, it's not really annoying now, but it's kind of annoying to figure uh, out the timings on the first playthrough, especially once you get under the moving spikes. On this drop, I just need to make sure that I don't actually touch the wall when I get through the 16 pixel. Because that would mess up my align for the ledge. Here I press D once, because if I don't, I won't be able to cancel right there. Now here, I basically need to do a 4.5 without a bunny hop, so... It's a 4.4, if you will. Uh, and then here's the starting of being under the moving spikes, which is very awkward and quite hard. It's these are probably some of the hardest saves on the first playthrough. And it has to be two frames. You can't free frame. You could one frame if you had the right V line, but. You can't see your V-Align, so why would you? Okay, here, I'm gonna grab that line, press D, and then go as far as possible. And that gets me set up the two frame into here. Now, I'm going to pause buffer, shift press, cancel over that apple. I don't know if you could actually two frame over it. The reason I press D is so I have this line here that makes it easier to visually see I'm in the 16 pixel. And then I could jump out uh, quite... It makes it easier to know when and if I can jump out without getting a mini spike. Because if I if I tried to two frame out while I was like as close to the mini spike as possible, I'd die. So I need to be a frame away from it. There you go. I could have two framed that drop, I just cancel it to make it more consistent. Here, the real intended way is to, uh, the water gives you your double jump back, so you're supposed to, like, float down. I just D-trick it to entirely skip that, because, uh... It's way, way easier. Well, not way, way, because even then, it's still not that bad, but it's quite annoying, because downwards water gates like that are kind of similar to downwards water planes, which aren't that bad in, in and of themselves, but if I could skip one, then I'll skip it. Yeah, what car what Cartesian said. These aren't meant to be swastikas. Also, I have triple jump here, that's what that sign says. But it's in Japanese, so I can't read it. And uh, triple jump actually makes this one of my favorite stages because it allows for some unique stuff. It also made the, the maker go uh, overboard on sphincters. Uh, there's three different saves that are just three different variations of sphincters.
This one's neat. Uh, this save is neat. I gotta use the, like, owl caves above so I don't run into the spikes. Is that what it actually says on the sign, Kanata? You could jump many- you could jump several times, but not many times? Okay, so here is the save I spent the longest on on my first playthrough. It's a double downwards plane, which is possible because of triple jump. But since I can't chain cancel, which is what I'd otherwise have to do, uh, I need to either one or two frame uh, this first plane. The reason I don't two frame it is because I wouldn't be able to have a shift press held down. Whereas if I one frame, I could cancel and keep the shift press from the cancel held down in order for me to low cancel the second one. I could also do something called cactus, but um, one, I don't know how to cactus that low, and two, uh, it's not at all necessary, and most people wouldn't be able to do it like that, so I don't. If you see me full dump, it just means that I missed the cancel. But yeah, I think on first playthrough, the save took me 5,000 deaths. Just gonna double check and make sure I do have the right align. No, other people- I've heard of other people cactusing it. I think Baron and Lifted Cactus. If someone makes a game that requires you to cactus, like, at such a low height like this, it'd be literally impossible for me, because I- neither of my keyboards could go that low. So there's two lines that work for this save. I'm kind of not getting it with that one, so I'm going to swap and see if I could do better with the one I just grabbed. Although I think my main issue is I'm getting the second cancel too early. I almost had it there. Let me try and focus on this. swap lines again. Yeah, usually this save doesn't take me that long in runs, but it's fine.
Nice. All right, there you go. It's kind of unfortunate that that took so long. But we're good now. Here, I'm going to cancel three times in a row. And here we are at the last one, uh, not one frame, last numpad of the run. I'm going to have to numpad the last jump on this. Destructor, say bomber. Say bomber. Bomber. Getting closer and closer to the hardest save in the game. Here's uh, another V line double diagonal. Wow, I actually didn't save. Not the first time in a marathon I've forgotten to hit a save. Shoutouts to me doing Z3 last year and forgetting to do that. Okay, here I, I don't really get the good align for any of these, I just get the, the okay align for all. This is the hardest save in the game. It's not possible to get a good line for all of these moves. Oh my god, that was fast as hell. Almost like Keemstar. Oof, what a recovery. Here's a uh, apple animation where I got just gotta walk under the apple on the when it's animating upwards. Here's a final sinker save. This, uh, the way this looks, it looks harder than the second one, but it's actually a lot easier than it. Focus because apparently I could uh, get sub 120, which would be neat. If 
just save is nice to me. My hand is actually starting to hurt. So I do hope I finish soon. Take a drink. How are my hands not dying? They're starting to. Be nice, please. Took my socks off, so maybe that'll help. Oh, come on. I'm sweating. Okay. Final jump of the game. Also, don't prematurely call time. I'll tell you when it's time. It's not time yet. Okay, here I just had to hold down and uh, it makes the credits go faster. Time is as soon as I grab this final orb. I just want to say shoutouts to uh, shout to my mom for bringing me into this world. Shout out to all my fans. Shout out to Sammy for all the support. Shout out to everyone who wished me luck. Shout out to Gab for being Gab and having a lit run. Shout out to Bootstrap for having a lit run. Shout out to Faz for being the best. Um, who else? Who else? Shout out to Arts for also being the best. Time, by the way. Time. Time. Uh. Shout out, yeah, shout outs to Lonk and Baron for getting me into running this. <laughs> shout outs for shout outs to Topi and uh to shout outs to Topi, Lonk and Baron for keeping me motivated to play Needle. Uh <laughs> and shout outs to all of you for watching this. Also, yeah, that was a world record. Previous world record was 126. Bloody hell, mate, you absolutely killed that game. That was insane. Alright. Seriously, thank you for running that. That, that was absolutely insane display of skill, dude. No problem. Thanks for having me. No worries, man. Uh, is there anything, any, uh, any sign-offs you may have uh, before we switch it over to Wolfskin Cakes 2-player, one controller, fan game run? I, I think I've said it all. Alright. Sounds good then. Uh, let's head over to the transition and we will get set up for, like I just said, Wolfskin Cakes uh, 2 play 1 controller fan game run. So that should be interesting. Thanks again, Bummer. No problem.